How do you heal the shame that binds you? I'm gonna give you some practical things that you can do to start to do that. John Bradshaw wrote a book called Healing the Shame That Binds You. It's an amazing book. He was one of the pioneers in understanding shame and how shame creates things like addiction and relationship problems. But his book is really, really good. A lot of it is about doing this deep inner child work. But I wanna give you some things that maybe aren't so deep, but can start to heal the shame that is binding you and start to help you overcome those thoughts about who you are. Just reading Brené Brown is not gonna help you overcome your shame. It's going to educate you up here. You'll know what shame is and why you have it and where it comes from. But there's actual things that you need to do in order to experience certain things so that you can heal your shame. Now, one of the first things that is helpful is for you to become aware of what shame feels like to you. What does it feel like in your body? What is shame? Shame is an emotion. It's an emotion that, that says, I don't want to get abandoned or rejected. I want to be lovable. And so I'm full of fear and I'm going to do something in order to feel lovable. Now, shame creates all kinds of problems. It leads to disconnection. It leads to avoidance and isolation. Shame does all of these things. So one of the first things to do is recognize how are you showing up in your shame? Brené Brown calls it your shame screens. Are you moving toward your shame? Which means you become more compliant, you kiss up, you try to be good enough. Are you moving against your shame? When you feel shame, do you get big? Do you get mean? Do you get aggressive? Or are you moving away from your shame? When you feel shame, do you isolate? Do you avoid? Do you try to become wallpaper? In different scenarios, you may be doing different things, but it's important that you start to become aware of when you're triggered into your shame so that you can actually do the opposite action of what your shame is telling you to do. There's this really weird way to overcome your shame. And what it is, is to actually accept your demons and to look closely at them. So instead of saying, I shouldn't have this shame, rather it's saying, I do have this shame and I have it for a reason. I understand what it's trying to do and how it's trying to protect me. And if you can do that, then you can look at it and say, thank you, but no thank you. I appreciate what you're trying to do. All of these thoughts of I'm not good enough, I should hide. You can see those things. You can love yourself in those things and choose not to act on those thoughts. Once you do that, you can start to combat your negative self-talk. You can start to recognize, yeah, you're there. I know why you're there, but I'm going to actually replace what you're telling me with other thoughts. Instead of saying to me, I'm not lovable as I am, I'm gonna tell myself that I am. Instead of listening to I'm not good enough, I'm gonna replace that with I am enough, even if I do fail. As you start to bring in those type of thoughts into your mind, into your soul, then you're gonna to start to act differently. All right, what I believe is the most important way to heal the shame that is binding you is to actually experience something different if you've spent your life knowing that you're not lovable and acting that way, then that's what you've experienced. So the way to heal from shame is to actually practice courage. It's to step into the possibility of failure, the possibility of somebody rejecting you, and allowing yourself to feel whatever happens in that vulnerable space and realize that you're okay anyways. Here's an example. I was listening to a podcast and this guy knew that he struggled with getting rejected. He was scared of rejection. So he decided every day he was going to experience rejection. So he went out and he did some crazy stuff. He asked people for a thousand dollars. He asked people out on dates that he thought he could never get a date with. He did all kinds of things and he told himself, look, I'm doing this because I'm going to get comfortable with rejection. I'm going to get used to knowing that I can be okay even if I get rejected. After his experiment, he realized I'm not that scared of rejection anymore. I can handle it. I can step into it. And it changed the whole perception of who he thought he was. He thought he wasn't lovable. He thought he wasn't okay. And what he realized is even if he gets rejected, 
He is okay. Life is okay. So you have to do the opposite thing of what the shame is telling you to do. If the shame is telling you not to go for that promotion, go for it. If the shame is telling you not to try to create that friendship that you really want, then try to create that friendship. But step into that vulnerable experience. And if it goes bad, if you get rejected, then step into it again and again until you start to experience something different. Another really important thing to do is to be vulnerable and be open. Allow other people in. Somebody with a lot of shame is not going to want to get close to people because shame is the fear of abandonment. So if you start to open up, and I mean open up on a spiritual, emotional level with the people who are safest for you, the people who are closest to you, then you'll start to experience love that you haven't felt before. You'll experience empathy, and you'll know that you're a lovable being, and that helps you heal that shame that's binding you down. So have courage to open up and to love and to connect with other people. If you need more help on overcoming shame, then please subscribe to my channel. I talk about shame all the time. I talk about things like how to know when you're feeling shame in your body and what's the difference between shame and guilt. So remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Remember, shame is an emotion. It's an emotion that's there to protect you from the fear of abandonment. Now, you're triggered into a lot of shame when you have unwanted identities, when you have th beliefs about yourself that you don't want other people to see. If you believe that I'm not enough, I'm a failure, I'm not good enough, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, all of those things are going to make it so you start to shame screen. When you can start to desensitize those beliefs, start to replace those identities through experiencing something different, then you're not going to be triggered into shame all the time. You're going to be able to show up authentic and open and honest with who you are in your relationships. If you found this video helpful about healing the shame that binds you and you're a parent, then you're going to want to check out my other video, How to Help a Teenager with Low Self-Esteem.